Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, it is John Boy time, your host John Fahey, joining me as ever. Prettiest boy under the sun. You're going to like the way he looks. I Aaron Fiat. Aaron Joseph Pita. I hope you like the way I look. I don't have a lot else going for me. I Aaron Fiat. <laughs> hey. And I'll back that Aaron uh, Aaron P. That lifetime limited Aaron P. That's right. I'll back that up. Uh, if, you're, if you're not satisfied with the way I look, you yeah. can send it right back, no questions asked, even if you use me all up. Yeah. You wow. get a lifetime of Aaron's P. That's right. Which... I get too. Uh huh. Big time. Uh, I hope you're satisfied. Uh, speaking of somebody who's no stranger to, to satisfaction, satisfaction. <laughs> the doctor. Not Manhattan. <laughs> not Infinity. Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Matthew Brousseau. Hi. LSD. Hi. This is my house. Well, this it's is an your apartment. House. And I have a roommate, but he's not here. Hey, <laughs> but we're here. Is there a doctor in the loft? <laughs> <laughs> is there a doctor in this bungalow? Um, I, uh, it's very good to see you boys again. Good to see you. You too. Uh, I, uh, I have, um, a little thing I'm, I'm going to talk about later, uh, based on what I did, uh, with the, uh, with our last Patreon episode. If you're not subscribed to the Patreon yet, $5 a month, extra show per week. And, uh, you get to support the good old profiles, boys. Isn't that nice? We need it. Uh, we talked about an unlucky ship in that episode, and I, it kind of just got me thinking about this other thing. I'll, I'll bring that up a little bit later, uh, and then I'll be doing uh, my, my proper, proper, proper. profile. profile. Uh, but Aaron, I understand that you have a piece, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> quite a piece, yeah. um, and I, I believe it kind of... Uh, Dovetails, dovetails uh, with the uh, butts right up against. Yeah, the uh, the postal uh, mischief we talked about recently. Yeah, uh, it it wasn't so much the the guy mailing himself. It was mm-hmm. uh, you had another couple of stories in there about a couple of fuckers. Guys fucking with each other. Yeah, yeah fucking yeah, pretending yeah. they were dead or not dead or yeah, each other. or saying you're dead. And you, yeah, you're no, you are. Bro. You are. Wake up, you're dead. Hello. Yeah, no, you're the fake one. <laughs> the real um, guy died. You're fake. Yeah. That's such a burn. It's bad. It's so good. Um. These, uh, similar, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of, now don't get excited, the Bone Wars. Oh, God. I think I, I think I lost them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got a bone war going on in your pants right now. I think so, too. <laughs> uh, the Bone Wars were, um. I think I fought in the Softy Wars, actually. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> Not nearly as vicious. It's more of a conflict. Yeah. Um. The Bone Wars, were, it was this thing that happened between these two paleontologists back in the day that gave rise to the study of dinosaur paleontology. Wow. Uh, it was these two dudes uh, named, ugh, their names too, it's just so... Gorgeous. Tasty. O- Othniel Charles March. Huh. Yeah, and I guess you, you become an archaeologist by being yeah, what born else into you... a rich family and having mm-hmm. nothing to do. Yeah, so. that's one of them. The other is Edward Drinker Cope. Nice. I drink a cope. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking helps me cope. Uh, <laughs> but you said it in a, in a bit of a, in a in an accent. Oh, I'm not good at accents. That's mm. your thing. <laughs> uh, so... In 1824, William Buckland found the first, uh, be, become the first complete dinosaur fossil. That was the Megalosaurus, mm. uh, or the, he discovered the, the the skull one. In 1858, the first complete dinosaur fossil was made. So this is this is blowing people's minds. You yeah, know, people were thinking dragons or whatever. Right? Fuck is this shit? The fuck is this giant dragon around? We knew it, right? All those tales were right. And so the study of paleontology started taking off with this, this these discoveries. Um, Marsh was a dude, rich dude, uh, who um, his daddy sent him to Yale. Cope was from a Quaker family. Mm. Uh, not quite as wealthy, but okay. And uh, these two dudes met in Berlin. Um, Marsh was studying there at the University of Berlin. Cope was there doing some writing, doing some work. He'd only, Marsh had held two university degrees, and Cope had like lack of formal schooling past 16. Uh huh. Um, 
but he had, he had already written like 37 papers compared to the two papers that Marsh had written by this time that they met in Berlin. But they, you know, found common ground that they were both tapping into this new study. And where were they both from originally? The United States. Okay. I uh, think. Yeah, they were because they went back to the United States. Gotcha. Um, Othniel. Othniel. How, how popular could that have been? It wasn't popular after these guys were done. Oh. <laughs> so, they, you know, they were both paying for expedition teams to go around the globe, digging up dino DNA, and they would send them back to them and they'd go over and stuff. And uh, they both, they went back to the United States around 1864 and they stayed cool with each other. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Cope named uh, an amphibious fossil after Marsh called the Pythonius Marshy. Mm. In 1867, and in return, Marsh named uh, a new and gigantic serpent called the Mosasaurus copianus. Mm. Copanus, copanus. You got a copianus. I do have a very yeah. copious anus. It can cope. And it's marshy. Yeah. <laughs> you, um, you said it, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but then in 1868, uh, you know, and another sign of goodwill, Cope took Marsh to this fossil quarry in New Jersey and he showed him around and, you know, it's kind of like a trade secret. Like, we found this place that's full of dinosaur bones. Don't fucking tell anybody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but behind Cope's back, Marsh made an agreement with the owner of the quarry to have any new fossils sent directly to him at Yale. Whoa. And uh, that would basically be the beginning of the end of their friendship. Fucking motherfucker. You fucking mother's in my fucking dead bones, man. And so Othniel did that or Cope? Othniel did that, of course. Yeah. The... And he's, you know, an entitled rich kid. Went yeah. Part of that whole Yale thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you going to ask what that whole Yale thing is? I know what that's from. What is that? That's from American Psycho. <laughs> ah. When, when the cop's interviewing Patrick Bateman, he goes, he was part of that whole Yale thing. He goes, what whole Yale thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of gay sex and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then Cope, then like these guys just really start fucking up. Like they're so, you know, because they get into this rivalry with each other, with each other, they kind of like throw proper scientific process throughout the window. Yeah, they Tiger King it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if anybody lost an arm. Spoiler, <laughs> but they they but, would never but, financially recover but from this. The, the the animals suffer is what I mean. The work suffers. The work the work suffers. So, Cope um, described and, and sketched out the Elasmosaurus, but he was rushed and fucked it up because he put the head where the tail was and the tail where the head went. Wow, yeah, so it's, not, like, it's not very scientific. Or... No, it's like it looks like it goes over here. The next. Falling he's, apart. He's but, a yeah. hunter gatherer. <laughs> it's he's not shitting his own head out. You fucking idiot. And then Marsh was quick to point that out publicly. Yeah. In a, in a public publication. Oh, that's so good. Look uh, at this idiot. Look at he this. Doesn't know what, he doesn't even know what it's ass from the tail in the ground. <laughs> um, uh, then Marsh, I mean, Marsh was also a fucking idiot too because he is responsible for the whole Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus naming debacle. Do you remember this? Like growing up, there was the Brontosaurus. Right, and then, right, like, right. You know, years later, it's like, oh, no, it's the Apatosaurus. It's, that was a name. He was the one that fucked it up because he found, like, a part of a skeleton and had, like, he just put another skull on it. Yeah, they mix, they mix them all up a lot of times. So they find that. I mean, that was, that was his fucking fault. Yeah. Um, it's really the Apatosaurus. That's it, what the, it is. The Bronto no, is not. There's no such, no such thing as a Brontosaurus. Thing. It's right. an amalgamation oh, okay, yeah. of two different. Right. Yeah. It's a chimera. Yeah. Not even a white Brontosaurus. Mm. What? Huh? huh? White? Huh? White. You know who this is. White? See, so you know who this yeah. is? You know who you're talking to here. <laughs> you know who it is. Dinosaur wasn't even white. What? <laughs> um I'm reaching. What if they what if they get what if they get get it on though? Then then can you have a brontosaurus? Oh like uh, <laughs> Oh I, I... <laughs> Uh, Marsh again. He was one. He was sent. Um, this, now this was before the Triceratops was officially discovered and named and classified. He was sent from one of the. He was sent uh, Triceratops horns. That's so fucking cool. That's yeah. a hot one. I mean, that's pretty dope. That's right? a hot find. I mean, it's mind blowing. Yeah, it's got horns and three of them. Jesus, yeah. right? You're like, what the fuck is this fucking thing? Uh, 
Stego? He That's goes, a tight one? He goes, he, he described it as some kind of bison. <laughs> it must be some kind of bison. Yeah, of course. What else could it be? I mean, yeah. we killed the, the rest of them, so there's got to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when, and, and also when uh, Marsh is such a kind, he, uh, when, 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 he, when Cope just fucked up the Elasmosaurus with the head and the tail and stuff, Marsh says, uh, when I informed Professor Cope of his error, his wounded vanity received a shock from which it has never recovered, and since <laughs> he's been my bitter enemy. Mm. Then they started fighting over fossils at the same dig site. Nice. Of course. They're yeah, having yeah. turf wars over turf and turds. Yeah. And turf bones. And turds. Now and then, then they start hiring spies. Oh. They put God. spies in each other's uh, excavation crews. God damn. They bribe. Workers uh, who work for quarries to like steal shit or sabotage shit, uh, <laughs> uh, throwing rocks, having rock fights, grown men no. throwing rocks at each other no on on an archaeological dig or paleontological dig wow uh, and then straight up destroying each other's fossils like hundred million year old priceless wow. finds of. Fantastic and unexplainable creatures heretofore yet undiscovered. Yeah, it was never about the smash. If, you, if I can't have it, nobody can. Yeah. <laughs> smash. Hey, that skull looks cool, crack. Whoops. Here's a nice piece of dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that? I mean, if you if you could see these guys down in the dig throwing rocks at each other, you'd be like, man, it's like apes. We're the <laughs> primitive ones. <laughs> Huh. Was there yeah? Was there a giant? It was like 2001. Um, was was there a monolith? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we call this one Moongazer. <laughs> um, it's grown men throwing good science out the rocks world. is really like. Do your do your aides join in on that? Is that <sighs> is it Team A versus Team? Are we all throwing I, rocks I think so. now? I mean, I like to think so. I would love to think so. So I do. <laughs> hey, why don't we stab one of them? <laughs> Let's Throwing take rocks. this triceratop bison horn and stab it through one of these Throwing guys. Throwing rocks are no fucking joke, no, man. No, dude, they hurt. You can die. Yes, they, you can be stoned to death. <laughs> Maybe you, bro. <laughs> 420, bro. I know how to handle my highs. <laughs> what? I know how to handle my highs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cope then, um, in, <laughs> in an effort to have a place to publish his papers... He bought the American Naturalist Journal in 1877 because nowhere else would take his papers. So he bought a journal. Good God. God. And so between... I mean, that's what you do. In 1879 and 1880... Vertical Cope, integration. Yeah, yeah, he published 76 papers. Um, and um, over his lifetime, 1,400 articles he would publish, making him, at the end of the day, one of the most prolific authors in american science history right but also that's like yeah, saying a lot of line drawings yeah it's a dinosaur with its head over here right marsh didn't like this he was determined to put him out of business like they it just became this rivalry as opposed to you know a concerted scientific effort yeah it's very um, clear that was never the case you know and now since he in 1882 he you know made a few calls and, and cashed in on his societal advantage you know being a rich family from and went to yale and all that stuff he got othniel is the name you know Marsh. i got you know i got money but <laughs> do you do, do i really need to say the last name yeah othniel sounds like if you combine money and incest yeah <sighs> like othello yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> they didn't use hyphens back then. They just combined the incest yes. names. <laughs> that's what incest is. A nice, good combination where you keep keep it well. In the family. I guess I'm going to keep it in the family. <laughs> Literally. Oh, but it feels so good, Uncle Othniel. <laughs> I said that like 20 times in the last 24 hours. Oh, man. All that, getting your cock sucked, kid. Just to yourself in the mirror. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm only sucking his own cock. Oh, my God. Like Dr. Infinity. You took the Dr. Uh, yeah. Infinity course. And then I come up for air and tell myself, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting my cock sucked. Yeah. You Dr. Infinity What's going bone? on? Yeah. It's a Dr. Infinity bone. God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's one man war. <laughs> Must be some kind of ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> Descended from the dinosaur. What's with the glove? <laughs> um. So... He pulls some strings and 
He uses his connections and political skills to become chief paleontologist of the newly formed U.S. Geological Survey in Washington. Just it's not the society, the survey. It's so it's a government entity. Oh. Whoa! And he is the chief of that. So oh, man. now he's got power, yeah. connections, resources, and Nick. In connections, institutional support. So he had access to federal funds, but he also had access to cutting political government funds. So, oh no! So he cuts cup. A there's cup one. Off. There's one. You know, I don't know. I just want to cut. You know, I just want this. Cook. I I don't know. I'll just pick a name out of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> we got to have some budget cuts here. Uh, so he fucks with cope, <laughs> cuts off the government funding from which he had been relying on. He had been relying on for years. And, um, dude, like you got to be fantasizing about really rolling up on each other and murdering each other every night. Oh, yeah. You got to be. It's bitter. Good it's... thing they only had rocks back then. <sighs> yeah. They... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they stabbed me with some sort of uh, bison horn, uh... three pronged <laughs> bison horn. It's devastating, <laughs> devastating weaponry. And I've never seen, never seen before. Mm. He, um, so Cope, like going broke, you know, quickly. Decides to kind of make up for this loss by investing in a um, silver mine in New Mexico, and uh, he is, lost is it, everything. Yeah, isn't Jesus that, Christ! That, isn't that a metaphor for losing everything? <laughs> yes, <laughs> investing in a silver mine. Yeah, he lost everything. Wow. So by 1890, Cope was separated from his wife and child, mm. living alone in a small Philadelphia apartment. Mm -hmm. Bones everywhere. All he had left was his fossil. Bones. No, all, all he had left. Oh my god. So, but then Marsh went a little bit too far. He, he kicked up. him when he was down? Yeah, he fucked him up. He fucked mm. it, but he fucked himself up. He fucked himself. He, Dr. Infinity fucked his own ass <laughs> by attempting to take Cope's fossils, claiming that they had been collected with federal money over the years and thus belonged to the government. Mm. Cope fought back in court, <laughs> produced evidence that he had paid for everything all of his whole, whole collection out of his own pocket mm -hmm. <laughs> and kept, was able to keep it. Oh, okay. nice. Um, <laughs> then he decided to destroy Marsh. <laughs> so Cope for over the years had been saving evidence of all the nefarious underhanded dealings and accusations of scientific fuckery mm. that Marsh had been perpetrating. <laughs> and he turned them over to a journalist at the New York Herald. Oh God, I love this. This just, goes deep, just bro. Fucking new. Uh, you, all right, now I'm gonna go to the newspaper. Yeah. Right? Take my bones. Yeah, nothing else. I mean, he had, didn't have any work. He didn't have any bones. Yeah, no family. I'm trying to take damn bones. <laughs> the headline, which read "Scientists Wage Bitter Warfare," mm. set off like a fucking firestorm. Uh, a, a, a public bone, a battle. Uh, bones on fire. Uh, the battle lasted for two weeks in the press. And the they fired accusations at, at each other. What year is this? This is uh, 18... Oh, Jesus. 90, 1891, something like that. Wow. Yeah, there's not a lot going on right then. Marsh and the U.S. Geological <laughs> Survey were publicly accused of corruption, <gasps> incompetence, and misuse of government funds. It's the incompetence that gets me. Uh, Congress investigated it and slashed funding for the survey. Damn! Eliminating the Department of Paleontology, oh! along with Marsh's position, <laughs> power, and most of his income. Holy shit. So now, they're both broke and publicly disgraced. Oh my god. Other paleontologists quit the profession because of how bad these guys stained the name of paleontology. Can't even be laid in a whorehouse with that title. No. No. Bones, you got your own, go play with your own bones. Yeah, come on, bones. Bone, what bones? No bones here. Just whores. It's, I mean, I think, you know, like a lot of that 1800s stuff that we talk about a lot on the program, too. It's also, you know, one of these things that is pretty open to quackery, uh, you know. Any early science, too, you know. Sure, yeah. But, um, I mean, I guess, you know, if you have any doubts about it or if you think anything is, is you know, anyway bogus, if you find out these two idiots are just fucking with each other, you go like, man, fuck this science, no, you no, know. Yeah, exactly. These yeah. are the preeminent you know, fucking uh, you know, figureheads of, of, of the entire uh, area Study, of research. Yeah. You know, like, I can't they get both these idiots out of here. It's tremendous. It's really good stuff. Um, so they're both broke. 
out of work, mm -hmm. disgraced. They move in together. <laughs> they start blowing each other. <laughs> start a TV show. <laughs> Other paleontologists are like, fuck it, I quit. <laughs> it's called, I've got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the sitcom. No. That's the show. Yeah. John. That's the that's show. That's really good. I've got mm -hmm. a bone to pick with you. No, mm -hmm. I got it. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. An odd couple bosom buddy situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to dress like women in order to get jobs. <laughs> Certain drinks with ribs and shit. <laughs> well, what is, oh, what is What's that? This? Oh, I, don't know. I don't know. It's the trachea. Wait. This is one of Othniel's. <laughs> it's the spine I took from you 20 years ago. <laughs> your wife gave me your backbone. <laughs> These are your balls. <laughs> she kept them in her purse. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> Cope's, I mean, Cope's really broke. He doesn't have family money, right? He had, I mean, he was from a Quaker family that had some, but not wealth, right? Sure. Yeah. But they had integrity. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're Quakers. Yeah. Like our greatest president, Richard Nixon. Millhouse. Um, yeah, no, 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 no Simpsons here. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Richard Millhouse Nixon. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so Cope puts up his entire fossil collection for auction to survive. Uh, but is unable to find a bidder who could afford it. Oh. Yeah, nobody's into it anymore. You fucked it up. Yeah, and he spent you fucked up the fucking Sunday. That's right. He spent 20 years collecting 80 tons of dinosaur bone. How many stone is that? Well, it's technically stone. <laughs> okay. mm. It's fossilized. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly so right. It's a, a ton of stone. Yeah. Um, 80 tons. Finally, after capitulating on price, a fellow at the American Museum of National History bid $32,000 for part of the collection damn in 1897 cope became ill and died at the age of 56 wow in 1899 at the age of 67 marsh died of pneumonia with 186 dollars in his bank account and his nice. last words were cope lives <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm sorry the 80 tons of marsh's collection is marsh who had the 80 tons mm. uh was acquired by the smithsonian mm -hmm. and uh he left after his death before after okay in his will, he left the bulk of his collection, which is more than 80 tons, to the Peabody Museum of Natural History at Yale. Together, they published descriptions of about 120 dinosaurs. Wow. Some good, some bad. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, there's no, no one knew how to put one together. Right. So at the end of the day, Cope left behind 13,000 specimens. Mm -hmm. And Marsh had a comparable collection. And Darwin, Charles Darwin even said that this collection or these collections um, were the best support of the theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. um, so even though all, maybe their work or their, uh, their, their papers, their publishing was not totally up to scientific, scientific snuff, uh, the specimens are still there and the specimens like set off right. the right. entire dino rush. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a lot more dino fuckery down the road uh, with just, you know, crazy rich people trying to, figure this out and cash in. Well, especially sure. because, you know, where the fossils are is often where the oil is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you destroy those on your way. You mm -hmm. know, it's very recent that we've just, if you find bones, you have to stop everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no construction project wants to stop. It's very yeah. recent that we found bones. This well, is a hundred years too. old. And there's an old uh, onion, uh, our dumb century headline. where are just like Satan found <laughs> In the earth, where it's just like a picture, you know. Uh, Exxon continues to drill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the stuff at the, uh, the tar pits here is still just fucking crated up. It's been crated up for years, and mm -hmm. it's, it's just a miscellaneous collection of, of bones where they were like, you know, well, we should keep this, but they would just toss it in a bucket. And so then it would be, you know, all of these ancient cats and 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 mm -hmm. mammoth and everything and so you know there's just a like a kind of lost round, and found yeah but then they go through and they brush them all yeah. and you can watch them working on it down there yeah yeah by the yeah. lacma they date it and figure out yeah. what, what dates match i mean the great thing about the tar is there uh if you want to be preserved forever animal human jump, yeah. in tar. jump into the tar and they'll find you years later fully and, uh, intact huh? yeah mm -hmm. so i don't know make a cool pose as you're drowning or something yeah yeah, yeah. check it off. Yeah. John sucking your own dick. Yeah, yeah big yeah. time. Yeah, that'd small be... time. Yeah. They'll just put you. The <laughs> <laughs> scientists be like, it could be done. <laughs> I'm going to call this one <laughs> Doctor Infinity. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. 
That's a Bone Wars. That's yeah, right. that's pretty hot. That's, right. that's pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard. Uh, I've seen snippets. Of yeah. It, but uh, just the pettiness. I mean, they're ba- they in uh, another yeah. life they would be best friends and the greatest. Well, they were friends for uh, a while. They would be the greatest team together. Yeah. 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 Um, it is. Yeah, it is funny. You know, it, it does it made me my mind go to the best of enemies thing, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you've watched. Yeah. Uh, the Gore Vidal, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, William yeah. F. Buckley, yeah. yeah. But there is a thing there where obviously they would, at, you know, at very least respected each other somewhat. But they, uh, yeah, they did nothing but just um, bicker and argue. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, That's well, you know, it. it's it's. <laughs> there's no way baby. you can really hate somebody that much without respecting them, because they're they're that, commanding the, all your attention. The, the you implicit hate is yeah. respect. Yeah, especially if you know you're, uh, you know, an educated, you know, intellectual person. You know, they would would be worth your hate, right? And even after Buckley's dead, Gore Vidal still fucking is like just <laughs> withering, <laughs> withering. You know, it takes down. Um, well, I mean, part of the the reason the friendship can hold is you could say that shit. Oh right, yeah. And yeah. You both still respect each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's very good stuff. Very good stuff. And then, I mean, when when was like the next wave of people getting into it? Just uh, I don't know exactly, but I'm sure pretty oh, wh- quickly oh. thereafter, after they died. And, and I mean, again, you're gonna you're gonna come across it, especially in the United States, as they're you know going across the country and mm, settling new places. Yeah. Like you go to Montana, Colorado, mm. all these big. You open got the space. mining happening. You're all gonna that run stuff, across yeah. it as you develop an undeveloped land. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of that. The ideas of archaeology. Um, we're, are, 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 are coming up around this time mm-hmm. and even best practices are not happening. Yeah. Because the, they don't even really 30, exist yet. Years. Yeah. It, it, it's a generational thing. Maybe the second or third generation of archaeologists are the ones who say, hey, what if we grid this out yeah. and, and we, we have a process here? Yeah, it was kind of like, you know, the, the guy that fucking bottled up a bunch of piss and cooked it and was like, oh, yeah. phosphorus, it must be, right. it's alchemy, right? And yeah. then eventually people start like a, a taxonomy and they start mm-hmm. a process and they're like, all right, there's a code, and yeah. then all of a sudden you have chemistry. Yeah. That was the thing, too, you know, like uh, with the, um, I think I told you, like when the economy started taking off in Ireland, they, you know, suddenly you're, you're building a, a bigger city, right. you know? And mm-hmm. uh, that was one of, you know, the big, um, it became the important city it was because it was one of the original. What city? Dublin, uh, because of the, uh, the landings of uh, the British, but previously the Vikings and stuff. So as they built it, you know they they were like oh shit well, we can't fuck with this there's all these viking tools here yeah. right you know right. and then sometimes they they would do a cool thing where they would just kind of um leave it in like a a, a plastic glass thing in the sidewalk mm. so you could oh, see it and it would tell you really like cool. here's like a viking hammer eric the red and this is, ring. This yeah, is yeah. exactly where it was found and we just let it lie you know Eric the Red murdered women and children with this club. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to CVS. <laughs> Welcome club, to CVS. <laughs> Welcome to Dwayne Reed. <laughs> Do you have your red card? Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's, a, you know, often the best places for animals at one point. You know, dinosaurs were around so much earlier than humans. That, what? Uh, allegedly. 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 Yeah. I mean, it was still a flat earth. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. God. But, Thank you. But, you know. There's even a flat earth documentary where they go with flat earthers and they all just disprove themselves. Wow. Oh, sorry. I just had to, no, no, that's, no. I got to watch it. I mean, it. that's I something found, we've never got into. I just found no. out about it today and I saw a little clip where mm. you just watch somebody die inside when he disproves his own theory. No. It's incredible. No. Sorry. I had to no, say that. No, no, no. I mean, but yes, if he could suck his own dick, he would. <sighs> yeah. He'd get it. <laughs> yeah. This is a flat circle. That's me sucking my own dick. <laughs> I can do it. You'll see. Yeah, well, I was sucking my own dick the other day, and I threw my uh, threw my back up. Harry ass pain. I could see the sun coming up. I know? realized it was just an optical illusion. <laughs> I mean, speaking of that, there is a movement, a small one, of people who believe that if they stare at the sun, sun gazing. Yes. They don't have to eat or drink. Yeah, it's pretty great. I'll, I'm going to cover that at some point. Oh God, guess. yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, the best place, especially now, you know, so the best place for cavemen to live, even over the next millennia, was also the best place for everybody else to live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so often either the structures get repurposed or destroyed, mm-hmm. and if you're lucky, then they get built on top of so you can go into go straight them and down. Find yeah. Them. Sure, yeah. 
but you know a lot of that shit is lost and with dinosaurs yeah, it's the at stuff least. near the water you know where the whatever it's well the if, water floods and ir- not, irrigates the land right and you know you're fishing there or the bear is fishing there and you eat the bear either way and you can see what's yeah. coming that's another like sure if you're next to the water you know that nobody's coming from there right for a few hundred years yeah well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah or a thousand years yeah and uh, you get to and jump on them. You get a corner. You build yourself into a corner, basically. That's right. Um, let's uh, take a break, and then we'll come back, and uh, we'll do uh, we'll do some more hot shit. <sighs> Great. And we're back. Um, I uh. I just got to, I got this sent so many times from people. People sent this this upcoming yeah this profile that I just I just couldn't ignore it anymore and you know every time somebody sent it to me um, I just got more excited about it sure and uh, probably a bunch of people sent it to you guys too I would guess uh, by the nature of the show uh, but I want to talk about um, Robert Liston Robert you know Liston no I don't know that one very very good. Uh, n- uh, he was the son of a Scottish clergyman and uh, uh, inventor, Henry Liston. And uh, his father, uh, also named Robert Liston, was the uh, moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Okay. And when was this? And, uh, well, he was, um, he became a surgeon in, in 1818 at the... Uh, uh, his father did. No, no, no. This is the Robert Liston Robert who I'm Liston. talking about. Um, 1818. His oh, father was, his father was a, cl- uh, a clergyman um, and an inventor. And he uh, he went to the University of Edinburgh and be- uh, became the great northern anatomist in Blackwell's magazine. Um, he went to the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh, and he was um, living there in, uh, like, 1832, 1833. And he studied, uh, you know, anatomy in, in school and stuff, and then he just started focusing on surgery. And he uh, he's very famous... Um, for uh basically um his his advancement in, in in surgery and this will kind of dovetail a little bit with the semmelweis stuff mm-hmm. that you did wash your fucking hands yeah <laughs> um but he he was uh he was famed for having some of of the absolute craziest surgeries of all time because oh. you know you would have um you would have a gallery yeah. Right. Watching you. Do and you're these doing things. blow or whatever. Right. <laughs> or heroin. And so he um I mean, you're, you're shoving mercury into people. You're just bleeding them out just to see what happens. Yeah. He would um he would he would go on to be to, to be, you know, very much lauded, which is which is uh somewhat hard to, to understand when you hear about some of the things that happened uh that oh, yeah. he did. But it was um he was considered like a um a point of of pride back then, as you talked about, like in the in the Semmelweis time, to be covered in blood and pus and stuff when you like when you do these things. Like they said, they said at the time that um, to to be like cl- like clean was to be. Um, if it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. But also, <laughs> Carl's Jr. <laughs> sure. surgery model. But, sure. but, but they would they would think that you were like posh. Or uh, like it was like an affectation. Uh, afraid to get your hands dirty, man. Yeah, yes, they said they they considered um, like the bloodier your coat was, the better a surgeon you were. Well, I mean, you know, well, well med- medicine at that time is bloodletting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and also every almost every single job involves some some shit, some some form of dirt or whatever. Yes. So any anybody who is clean at all. Yeah, you're a pussy. Yeah. Yes, it was um it was a messy business. Yeah. And And besides, I mean this guy was basically a barber. <laughs> like Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm a barber, a dentist, a qualified surgeon extraordinaire. Life, life to... was a messy business back then. He right? um hey, you said it, pal. Hey. He was uh um in in this in this time uh which you know, he kind of saw the end of because of some advice with uh, you know, the introduction of, of all, all different types of things, um, including anesthesia mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, a more cleanly workplace for doctors. He was around for all of that. Um, but his, his most famous stuff became before that, of course. But it was, you know, it's just, you, you know, you have to keep in mind, it's in this time where... Upheaval. The, the, 
the mm-hmm. real pre- prevailing thought was that, yeah, uh, it's dirty and you, you get blood all over you and um, you're uh, being like a posh snob if you're not down with that. And they said the attitude towards it was the same as an executioner uh, cutting his, trimming his nails before cutting off a head. That was the idea about uh, maintaining a, a that's a, a pretty a, sick burn a clean uh, workspace. It's just so crazy though how these these attitudes can be just turned in the most directly one eighty thing with a little bit of evidence. Yeah, and knowledge and yeah, under pay understanding. Att- pay attention. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was, I think, too, because of you know some of us his friend and stuff like that. You know, it's like and it, it, and also the the discoveries that were made at the time. Yeah, right. like if, if you know, you're not familiar with what we're talking about, too, like go back and listen to Aaron's episode about uh, Ignaz Semmelweis. Ignaz Semmelweis. Yeah, well, you know, the scientific there's no scientific method, right? The scientific I mean, method kind of exists, but there, it, you know, there is this. There's always an orthodoxy which is reluctant to give up its place. Right. Right. Um, but I think the scientific method, I think, was invented by Isaac Newton. Mm-hmm. But it, but it uh, I feel, uh, when we talked about vivisection, mm-hmm. um, oh god, and 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 it was uh, Bernard, I believe. Um, he he's the one who he, you know it wasn't accepted the sci- the idea of scientific mm-hmm. method, right? It still I, I mean, was you, not um, orthodox. Even today, uh, feelings are uh, oh, yeah, used yeah. against us as facts all because the feelings time. Feelings are still more important all the time. Yeah. We yeah. still have not. There's plenty of people that has not. Forty percent. This goes to the previous segment. Forty percent of Americans believe that human beings and dinosaurs lived together. At some I mean, point, that would be really cool. Yeah, It'd be duh, the coolest. But it's not. Yeah. Because <laughs> dinosaurs didn't exist. I mean, unless you got, unless you got birds. It's yeah. A plot by Satan to trick us into thinking the Earth is older than it is. So fucking read a book. Yeah. One of them. It re- <laughs> It'd be a cool, be a cool thing to be like. You know, like the the guy that made like dino shoes, like the blacksmith of yeah, 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 dinosaurs oh, for his yeah, brontosaurus yeah. saddles. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no, I mean, it's a whole fucking yeah, busload of people. Yeah, yeah, getting you on know, that, um, that Bronto that doesn't exist. Fred Flintstone's a big customer. Mm-hmm. Big Bronto, guy. there, that's good. Um, See, if I said white Bronto, then you guys would have known what I meant. Oh, like a white Ford Bronto. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah, no, nobody knew what you were talking about. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. now I get it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> It'll go down in history as a race thing. Um, so this guy, uh, this guy uh, Richard Gordon, who who basically wrote a book about uh, huge medical disasters, um, he described uh, Robert Liston as the fastest knife in the West End. Now I think I know who this guy is. Yes. Also, um, a compliment. Then now doesn't sound. No, it doesn't sound. It sounds like something like the Cray brothers would be involved in or he something. Cu- he cut out my gallbladder in 12 uh, seconds. No, that's East End, actually. But uh, <laughs> but he could amputate a leg in two and a half minutes. Um, that's, bro, that, that's... Right, now I'm starting to remember. That would eventually work its way down to 28 seconds. Now I'm starting to remember, yeah. Now, the thing is, is that... Um, it was... He, he, he became famous for this thing of saying, time me, gentlemen, time me. Yeah. And then, like, onlookers said, it was almost like the first flash of the sight of his knife seemed almost simultaneous with the sound of him sawing through bone because he went that fast from cutting through flesh to putting the knife in his mouth and starting to saw through the bone during an amputation. And as you know, when you go to the doctor, you want now. You want it now. You don't want... To hey, wait don't don't let that. me start thinking about it. Right. right. Well, I think I think he yeah, was could probably be right about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> be sarcastic. And so this 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 had a lot to do with this thing of um, ceteris paribus, which is um, all else being equal. Ah. One, one of my favorites. Um, because what nothing is. What are you talking about? Isn't that like a a, a psych metal band in the eighties? It's <laughs> the idea in Florence Nightingale's uh, notes on nursing. She said there are many physical operations where ceteris paribus, all else being equal, the danger is in a direct ratio to the time the operation lasts and the quickness in which it is completed. Yes, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so, well, certainly back then when you back have, then when you have a hundred people in the gallery coughing into your open wounds. So the incision to the clipping of the excess sutures right. that would be two and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. It was like he was. So broke. he sewed up the yeah femur or whatever. Yeah. Did he cauterize stuff? Did he use? Do you know anything about that? Like I don't. I don't. I don't. Probably didn't know about that. I don't think there was anything like that. Um. They, yeah. They said. Um. 
yeah, he would to, to free both hands, he would throw the knife in his mouth. Ha <laughs> um, ha! And imagine? he was six foot two, and he was in a, a uh, green coat with Wellington boots, oh. mm-hmm. and he would he would just be running all around, and his you know patient would be fainting and sweating, <gasps> and, and uh, he'd just be yelling, uh, "Time me, gentlemen, time me," which became like a catchphrase. <laughs> and get your own damn fries. Everybody would have everybody would have pocket watches, and he um. These are, I guess, um, yeah. This is the the, the, uh, the the I guess suppose the most famous things that are are, are referenced in the book, um, which are uh, he he removed in four minutes a forty five pound tumor in his scrotum, which the owner had been carrying around in a wheelbarrow. Oh boy! So, so that South Park <laughs> episode was actually kind of a biopic. <laughs> Now, uh, first of all, can you imagine that asshole rolling Hey, up? ladies. <laughs> There's no... <laughs> Speed bump. Oh! Like, he just has to wear a bathrobe. There's no pants. There's nothing... So, there was this guy when I was in high school. There was the In-N-Out by my high school. It was very cool. We had an In-N-Out. Nice. <laughs> kind of the place to go. And, you know, so before... You, like, when you're like... It was kind of the place to go. You know, there's yeah, always, yeah. like, the, yeah. pl- the place that you go. Yeah, the Peach Pit in 90210. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. And uh, both that and the in, in and out sexual, both of them. Ooh, yeah, I'd go in and out of the peach pit <laughs> myself <laughs> quite a the, bit. What's the happy days one? Uh, Fonzie's dick, Mar, not Mar, uh, Marv. I mean, first it was an Italian fat guy, Sal's, then it was Sal's, Mr. Uh, Miyagi. Yeah, yeah, forget his name, but yeah, also sexual, sa- same guy. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. pretty hot. Yeah, well, wax off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um Arnie's Arnold's mm-hmm. Arnold's nice. It was Arnold's? Um, so, uh, uh, oh, so In and Out. So there was this guy that would always be there. Like if there, we're going there after a football game, or we go there on some n- night. There's this guy that's there all the time, and he sits at one of the tables, and he plays chess, basically with himself or anybody who will sit down. And he was called Chess Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes sense. And. Uh, but he also had <laughs> inventive. This, <laughs> he just yeah, it wasn't. This, a, it wasn't a smart school. He had this fucking giant armadillo-sized bulge goiter in oh, his no. fucking pants. Oh, no. And we now, na- I mean, you know, we're sixteen-year-old boy, fifteen, sixteen-year-old boys. We're like, what the fuck? Does he have elephantitis of the balls mm-hmm. with forty-five pound tumor? And a, you got a wheelbarrow for that thing? Man, all the piss that's it, sloshing around. It was a colostomy uh, bag. It was an external oh, colostomy okay. bag. We oh, eventually figured well, out. I mean, that's what the ball. The so balls. this guy's got a big old bag of piss the balls are a colostomy bag because that's where all technically the, piss, the, the piss balls goes, are a colostomy yeah. bag without the shit my mm-hmm. i don't know about you guys i don't keep shit in my I balls no any, no I no, no not anymore i don't piss in my shit and i don't shit in my piss and all my cum is stored obviously mm-hmm. in john's butt yes <laughs> which has been an issue this whole time you've been here yeah yeah he's best fiending huh? yeah. you know? hoarding it oh uh, hoarding it yeah with a W. So anyways, that's very nice. Big old sack of shit and piss hanging out with this yeah. guy while we're eating our double doubles. But at first, she thought it was this nice big ball. We thought it was some elephantitis like yeah. situation of his testes. And yes. you guys were like, "That's really cool." We're like, oh, "Fuck, nice, bro." No Man, you're so good at chess. You got a brain in there playing chess, so good. <laughs> he, uh, this is uh, one one of his. Um... <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> Who are you playing? Your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Big old bag of pissing brains. Playing your big old ball brains. Bad brains. <laughs> um, there was an uh, an argument he had with uh, 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 about the pull sitting bulge in a, in a in a young child's neck, uh, which he thought was an abscess. And um, the other uh, surgeon said, "I think it's uh, an aneurysm of the." Carotid artery. Ah, oh, the carotid artery. The big carotid one. artery. And poof, listen, said, whoever heard of an aneurysm in one so young, flashing a knife from his waistcoat pocket, he lanced it. Out leapt arterial oh, blood and the boy fell. Oh. <sighs> he, he died, but the artery lives and it is on display. Oh, God. In the University College Hospital. Son, I've got some good Let me news. slit this boy's throat to prove you. You're going to live forever, or mm-hmm. part of you as a... In memory. <laughs> um, he he, uh, <laughs> he, just, he just slipped this guy's throat. He just stabbed one of his patients out of nowhere. Yeah, in, 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 uh, this, is, this is one of his, his, his greatest hits. He amputated a leg in two and a half minutes, but in his enthusiasm, 
the patient's testicles as well. Took off his balls. Just, they were there. No, they were probably sticking to his legs. He's just no going, he's going too yeah. fast. Oh, man. He must have been, a, that must have been a pretty high leg amputation. <laughs> Dude. That would get him at the hip. Got his balls off. <laughs> it seems the man has an abscess in his groin. So now, uh, you know. Me. Um, Why is I, there piss all over this? Uh, uh, later on, uh, 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 Robert Liston would go on to, to die in a sailing accident. Um, but when he died, you know, his uh, his fellow surgeons were like, we uh, need to properly um, honor this man because um, due to the uh, the swiftness of, of his uh, surgeries, his mortality rate was one in ten. Everybody else was like one in four. Right. Oof. So they made like a bust of him and they handed out like a medal every year based on like, you know, yeah. um, uh, kind of, you know, just advances in, yeah. in, in medical uh science when um he was he was um like a very moral person also but he, he, i mean a lot of those doctors they believe they were doing the, doing right, the thing. right thing you know they're, yes, they're bleeding was, giving mercury really quite exceptional um because there would be people that they would say there was absolutely no hope for mm -hmm. and then he would take them on and he would he would finish you know whoever was in his waiting room which grew to swell with numbers due to his success rate and that he would uh take on anybody regardless of of how hopeless it seemed um and other doctors would not uh, well and he's moving through patients yeah yeah, yeah. yeah um <laughs> you know other guys are four or five patients a day this guy's probably i don't know 30 but yeah also i mean the speaking totally out of my ass i'm sure they took the idea of quick is best but what it really was was less time for an open wound yes. to be yes. surrounded by people who didn't know anything about right. bacteria but it's yeah. true enough yeah. it's truer it's 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 a it's a truer uh uh fact yeah. than the facts of the time for them yes right it, it served its purpose mm -hmm. yeah he was he was you know a bit, a bit dismissive but it was usually more with um fellow the medical professionals it was with the poor he was especially just incredibly kind and patient mm. and yeah he um of course you know people w would say because he took on all of these supposedly helpless cases that he was being showy and it's like yeah okay well maybe but it also helped yeah well, i mean it, it, you, it, you like the thing was is that you might die him saying 10 seconds is showy but it still was a better result than everybody yeah. else but also you know him saying timey was it at that time, if the only thing you have going for you is speed, you know, cutting yeah. two and a half minutes to a half a minute yeah. is medical progress. Also, uh, right. If, also, if, if you associate with, if you associate that speed with success. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's, so I want to make you, sure I do it as quickly as possible for assume, the sake of the patient. Yeah, the mm -hmm. faster the better. Also, back then, a pocket watch was basically like magic. Yeah. So it would be pretty right. cool for anybody to have to use one. Yeah. It's like yeah. Siri. Yeah. Um, he was, um, yeah, he was just taking, you know, everybody, um, that was, you know, under, on, on, like, uh, like last resorts and, you know, he would, he would try to, to, to do it. And, you know, since he was also more capable than the rest of them, he was kind of like, of course, why not me? So I have a yeah. question. Okay. Is this around the time of Jack the Ripper? I believe, uh, I believe it's about 20, 30 years uh, at least before, I think so Jack, maybe, Jack you know, the Ripper was the late 1800s. All right, so now you gotta just let me let me let me spitball something here. Maybe go for maybe it. Maybe kick something around. Maybe you're a your trailblazing surgeon, the fastest knife in the West End. Um, you you you're better than anybody, and you uh, you master your craft. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you know, maybe you're looking for a new thing. Mike Michael Jordan, you know, obsessive gambler. Your baseball. Golfer is you know maybe you need maybe you need to scratch that itch as you get older but they're not letting you into the surgery gallery you know you pass your prime you're not your credentials aren't renewed but you know you still feel like you gotta cut some shit mm -hmm. and you know you love the poor and yeah. hookers <laughs> Yeah, no, I would say his 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 uh. It, so maybe he's Jack the Ripper, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I would really doubt it. I'm so fast. It sounds like he was um he was so kind to them that it actually um pushed them out of uh, Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, uh, and they that's when he went south and really he made Murder. he made he made a fortune when he when he was like you know in you know London area uh -huh. stuff. Um, Jack the Ripper was not fast. 
he would he would spend a lot of time fully dissecting the but, insides. Of but he, you got to learn. The, this guy, this <laughs> guy would go into the tenements in in the real slums of uh-huh. Edinburgh, and he would um, he would love having successful operations in these just absolutely you know desperate poor slums, mm. and um, the doctors hated him for it, and they really doctors hate this guy. They really got together, and, and one one trick, and they barred Fast. him, and um. Then he, when he went south, he became professor of surgery at University College Hospital, and that's where and he, that's when he made money. That's when he by made getting kicked out of Edinburgh. Yeah, um, the fuck him. But yeah, he would. Um, if he thought somebody was doing something wrong or taking advantage of people, he would fucking kick your ass. He was that kind of person. Nice. Um, and uh, I'll cut you. His his this is um his most famous case, right? Um, yeah. He amputates this leg in under two and a half minutes. Um, oh. And yeah. he cuts off his assistant's fingers yeah. in the amputation. <laughs> yeah. Another guy, they have another, markers to draw another line, guy but... gets blood on his coat and thinks he's been cut. He dies of shock. Right. The patient and his assistant die of gangrene. Yeah. And it's the only operation in history with a 300% <laughs> mortality, rate. mortality rate. Incredible. <laughs> That's the best. That's Pure abject insanity. I'm listen, man. I set a lot of records, dude. One of them is a 300 percent more most, most deaths in one surgery. This guy, I I brandish my knife. This guy paints, faints because of it, but <laughs> dies of shock. Down a little bit. So, <laughs> so, 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 but meanwhile, there's also a gallery. There's yeah, like, who knows who had an aneurysm up in the gallery? Imagine wiping his knife up this guy's dead. What's his problem? <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> yeah. Get him some ass. I'm scared. Sorry about your fingers, buddy. <laughs> You'll be fine. I can operate on that if you need yeah, me to. Exactly. I at least, I, I at least you're not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you think I t- took off his testicles or something? <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, that was, you know, the one in 10. Mm-hmm. The one in 10 was not. You got a three for also. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that fucking bad. Do you think he was like, fuck, I totally screwed up my average. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> No, so then I was, you know, bat- I was batting at one hundred. He um, he uh also comes around uh during during this time to you know the new prevailing stuff of the day, and one of them was the uh, anesthetic stuff, right? And like chloroform. And- well, e- ether, ether that's was right. the original one, and when he used it in his first one, he uh, had a jar of it and then a tube going to the patient's mouth. The patient ah. passes out, and you know, Two for la- you, one for me. <laughs> later on, later on, Ether would yeah would be shown to like have vomiting and stuff like that. But it was the beginning of anesthetic, and he said he called it uh, I think because of its American origins a Yankee Dodge, because- and he said this Yankee Dodge beats mesmerism hollow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is well uh, because you know he because mesmerism a he's just talking about hypnosis. Yeah, he's not talking about Monte Carlo's and flop wits. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. um, he's saying this shit works. Yeah. You know, and now I don't have this guy sweating and struggling while I fucking, you know. Now I can take him thirty-five seconds. And so yeah, yeah exactly. that yep. was that was I believe that. So for, he was that first was one okay with, with the it. with the anesthetic was. When you say it's a Yankee Dodge and that it beats mesmerism hollow. He was he was basically saying like I'm acknowledging that this is, um, maybe a fatty, type thing. It's a, a, it's fa- fad. a fad type thing, but. I'm telling you, man, this works is basically what he was saying. Oh shit! And um, mm, yeah. And yeah, so okay. then that helped it catch on. Huh? I fi- I figured that he would be very uh, critical of it. Like uh, no, even when the Semmelweis stuff came around, he really started. Um, good for know, him. He, he yeah, he took it on board. Cool. Um, but yeah, yeah there was us. a lot of, a lot of ego involved with you know a guy like him and stuff like that. But he was. You know, at the end of the day, really, I feel like invested in doing the best thing for yeah. patients. Yeah. Well, you know, the understanding was the quickest is the best. The safest, and he was the quickest, and he was the quickest, and so he and wanted really, to. Bra- I mean, he wanted to brag about saving people. One in, in four compared to one in ten. Yeah, I mean, and then you wash your hands, and also, <laughs> and also, you're doing the um, the incurables. Yeah, so and, you're, and, you're taking the harder cases, right? So yeah. Really, what's his, maybe his average is? A little yeah, bit so it's like. Uh, He's, um, you know, uh, like, you know, because when you read all this stuff, the stuff that grabs the headlines is these nightmare cases, like where he's yeah, chopping three, balls three off. Three men and, die in a surgery. Yeah. yeah. And, um, three men in a surgery. But then when you actually look, look deeper into it, you can see that, uh, you know, number one, he's, you know, willing to get with the changes of the times. Mm-hmm. Um, 
basically in lockstep you know pretty much as soon as I mean, they come out that's rare today right yeah you know and but you know when i when i looked and i saw that like oh people were like oh we need to have a bust made of him and we need to give out a medal in his name like there was all these fellow surgeons that were like this guy was really great mm. and deserves to be you know um, remembered yeah in medicine um and uh he i don't know, i i love the idea that he was just kind of like always willing to try yeah. yeah you know especially on these really really just destitute and desperately poor people and you know surgeons were kind of up their own asses even then and he was like I'll fucking go into the slums. I'll deal with all that shit. Like, I don't care. Yeah. You know? I mean, um, you know you're going to die, and there's one guy who's saying, I'll try. Meanwhile, like, all these other people are saying, no, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know you're going to die. You might as well take a chance on maybe not dying. Yes, yeah. So, But he brought he brought in, you know, a lot of, you know, you can see the, the clergy in his family, too, from the way he would carry himself with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. you with, know. What, with the Wellington boots and the, <laughs> yeah. the, with, yeah. the with coat? The, well, there was one thing. There was one thing going on where um, there was a woman that had been murdered, and her body went on display, like in the in the university or something like that. And he was like really sketched out by the uh, the attending physician and thought the the physician had something to do with her murder. Oh, that was Jack the Ripper, probably. Probably, yeah. Honestly, we'll say we can say definitely. I think so. Yeah. I think conclusively <laughs> yeah. on this show. But he was like <laughs> unnamed uh, random doctor. He fucking he kind of kicked the guy's ass and was like, "You're gonna give you're gonna give her a burial. Like, get this out of here. Like, what are you doing? Like, fetishizing this? Put um, electrical tape X's over her nipples and stuff." So he was uh, he was yeah, just like you know a very kind of moral <laughs> moral man. And he uh, company. <laughs> he uh, he uh, you know he was um, he seemed like he was walking the walk. He he was I, chopping I the block. Yeah, and I think it, it's interesting too that you know he's, you know, first of all coming from Scotland. I don't know how that would be accepted really in in London at the time. And don't forget he's been kicked out. If you know if you if he you got if kicked you, out of Edinburgh, if you get word, you know, from the institutions he's at up there, it's really nothing good is being said about right. Him. But well, yeah, perhaps, and I don't I don't know the dynamics of the relationship there. But sometimes, um, you know, when. Another institution that's a rival, yeah, kick someone out. The opposing institution welcomes them with open arms. Those right. idiots didn't like him. Come, come on, come, yeah. come to daddy. Yeah, but I mean, I think it was yeah. Part of it was also, and maybe they recognize you know game recognize game. London University College is London is University College London. Well, you know what's funny is also yep. that, um, you know when you're good at something, you get called showy. Yeah, and it's like. What good. my success is the show, yeah. right, 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 or is it just success? Yeah, um, yeah. Is, well, is yeah. It, success. Is, am I being is showy it... by taking on hard cases, or is that just the right thing to do? Yeah, you just don't like it. Um, well, success is a show. Well, Succession it... is a show on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out now. Season three coming yeah. out soon. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah. Tell them COVID. Brian you. Cox. No. Jerry Culkin. HBO Max coming out. Made. 23rd. The show is brought to you by Succession. <laughs> but yeah, guy eats he, his own cum. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. It was really hot. Um, <laughs> um, and warm <laughs> and hot too. <laughs> it's hot too. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, what? I, I don't know. I what think. Did you, what happened, John? I think. Uh, I John's think, losing it. I think that. Um, I think that there's yeah the, like. I mean, do you become showy by virtue of, of your success, or you, do you just automatically get called it? I think a lot of times. I mean, I don't know in this particular case, but I yeah, I think that that is something that happens quite a bit. Is people are just resentful of your if you're a phenom, if you were head and shoulders above people, mm -hmm. so you're gonna just be called that sometimes yeah. because yep. you can. You do the hard things easily, and you do the impossible things nobody else. But it's can. also it's also mm -hmm. often leveled at people that are um uh very moral. Like it's like AOC being called showy. Yeah. It's like is she or does she just give a shit? Right. Are you showy by going into the slums and doing a surgery, or right. is that just the right thing to do? Or just also being uh, younger, a step ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, a product. Everything that younger people do is showy to yeah, everybody he thinks who's he not know, there. He thinks he knows everything. Right. I'm an older That's surgeon. What, right. And it's like, yeah, you're an older surgeon. Go talk to him. Right. Yeah. Learn something. Right. 
And you know? maybe he'll learn something from you too. It's a two way street. Like, yeah, like my ego is not offended if somebody is just like younger than me and knows how to do something I like doing better than me. Right. Then yeah. you go like, "What's he doing?" Yeah. But there is a, there is a bell curve of accepting right. and being able to take in knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the older the older you get, the less you're able the less you're you're I think there's a it. phrase about dogs or something <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they all go to heaven or yeah yeah like, turn tricks or but, but no like in your 30s is your peak even learning about yourself you said it. Uh, it slowly you slowly build walls to yeah you, you become and, and, you you're you know the 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 mold hard the, the clay hardens yeah and mm -hmm. you're just less open to because you think you've got to figure it out and to a point, you have, more, you know, you have more experience. Your brain can't. Your brain just doesn't process it yeah. enough, and so it's almost an escape mechanism. To... Yeah, it just it those pathways get carved, and mm -hmm. that's it. That's yeah. why you got to take mushrooms. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. You got to yeah. so you start once once you once you get um, <laughs> AARP magazine for free in the mail. The, yeah, they should say that's what it comes with, much. like five dried grams mm -hmm. in the back. Yeah, I think Snoop Dogg is advertising for them now. Ain't that a bit? Dude, Snoop Dogg is, he is doing ARP shit. Yeah. Snoop Dogg's like 50. That's crazy. <sighs> it's crazy. He can't be. He must he be. be. Johnny, if he isn't, then he's a vampire. And he, that's an issue. He's no, he has. He also a, got famous when he was like he 19 has, years yeah. old. He has a hydroponic nutrient line. Yeah. Snoop Snoots. <laughs> Snoop Snoots. He's got other like business ventures that are like less cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doing shit with uh, Martha, Martha Stewart, Stewart yeah. which is pretty dope. Uh, yeah. And he's got some other stuff like, you know, AARP level shit. Yeah. You know what? That's great. <laughs> it's really nice. It's really... Murder was the case that they gave me. <laughs> and now it's... Now I would it's like to share... Hit five I would tips like... to joint health. Any, 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 <laughs> joint health. Any, any tips? Any tips to joint health? Uh, any snoots? Shit, man. You know. <laughs> You can uh, smoke weed every. Can we take another break? Um, and then um, I'll, I'll, I would like to share like my my little stuff about the luck, shit. That I wanted to tell you the luck, sure. the luck stuff, the Joy Luck Club, ah. John Luck Club, <laughs> yeah, the John Boy Luck Club. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's All do right, it. let's do it. And we're back. I was wondering. Uh, so we we talked about the you know the uh, the Willie D. Uh, yes, the the yeah. ship. Yes. yes, and that was um, the uh, the William D. Porter, I believe, in um, the profile uh, Patreon episode we just did, and it's you know it's characterized um, as being an unlucky ship. Um, I would say that's more ineptitude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It made it. Yeah, um, even the Titanic. I can think of some other ships that. The Titanic wasn't unlucky. Uh, they just fucked up. They yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fucked it up. I think most shit, the ocean's pretty big. Unlucky. Listen, is, man, uh, the Titanic going down was a conspiracy because the people on that boat were against the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't even want people to go outside. Yeah, they wanted people to go in the so ocean. So the iceberg was a Jewish plot. <laughs> yeah. For iceberg, excuse me. Uh huh. <laughs> what is that? Hello. Saying? It took down the good God-fearing wasp Protestants who owned all independent <laughs> banks. Wait, that... why are you tapering off with your enthusiasm? Because you told me to lower my voice. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. That I'm just saying, man. I'm just I'm looking take up, over. I'm just saying that those John Jacob Astor, or Jonah Jameson, <laughs> or whoever was on the boat, John Jacob Jingle Hummer, John Jacob Jingle Hummer Smith. That's my name too. All those people were all against the Federal Reserve, and what? They all fucking sank, apparently. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly sank in the Atlantic Ocean, all right? So maybe it wasn't, you know, an aptitude, right? Just saying. Do you know about uh, Violet Jessup? I don't even know what that is. Is that a color? Violet Jessup. Violet Jessup, previous to the Titanic, which you say was a grand uh, uh, Jewish reptilian. Jewish that's right. Yeah. Um... Uh, Reptilian, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, I, I she, yeah. she was on uh, the Olympic, um, and and that was in 1911. Uh, and now, the Olympic was, was the sister ship, it or was, was that the Britannic? Uh, I think the Britannic was it. The Olympic might have been before. That sounds right. What, there was what were the sister ships? The Nina sister, <laughs> the sister ship. Well, it was it, that was RMS uh, Olympic. And um, it, it collided with the HMS Hawk, as in Ethan Hawk, and it, and it's and it's, it's, and it's, it's, it's a good actor. It sunk. Yeah, 
And um, but Hawk kept on floating, right? God, when two boats crash into each other, it is half an hour of mayhem, madness. Yeah, the, 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 the yeah. ocean is a huge thing, and it just takes forever I, for them to crash. Yeah, yeah. They just keep going. The and momentum. They just go, and here the we wait. go. Here we go. Oh, oh, we're not gonna. We're not gonna hit that. Are we gonna hit that? Here we yes. fucking we, go. Well, and, you, and you watch the the disaster happen in slow mo. It's yeah. just like. I'm at the back of the ship. Is mm-hmm. that a, yeah, that we're boat's, watching uh, the middles of this ship. Just, huh. oh. Yeah, I haven't seen a boat a, in a while. A lot while. more people start looking into the captain's room. It's you, like you know, like, about, know about this. It's like this. <laughs> it's like that scene in Austin Powers, the guy getting the rolled over roller. by the. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. That's a, that's exactly a shipwreck. So she's able to she's able to escape that collision, um, and then she gets work on the Titanic. Oh, and um, and. <laughs> She gets she gets out of that. Oh, no. What was her job? Um, Hostess. She, she, she was doing like stewardess type spy. stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Iceberg spy. Agent provocateur. <laughs> and she gets on a uh, lifeboat, and um, then she she ends up on a uh, uh, first world war the hospital ship, which is the HMS Britannic. Oh boy. And uh, that gets that hits a sea mine and that sinks, and she gets sucked under the boat oh. and hits her head on the keel. Oh, oh my God! And she hits the, gets to the surface, and somebody grabs her, and <laughs> she, she was in three. She was like that fucking cat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe she was the cat reincarnated. Yeah, Ooh, it wasn't the cat. The cat was World War Two. The cat was her reincarnated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she, fucked, she had to she go did down. Some bad she had to go down. Life. A yeah, level, she, yeah, she probably yeah. killed some kids. Yeah. She worked still on the seas uh, the rest of her life. Oh my God! Yeah. Well, three, if it didn't, three ships sunk. It didn't kill her. Three. Where was she gonna go to the land? Where she could yeah, die at any I mean, time? Jesus yeah, Christ! You're on car. the fucking yeah. Titanic, and all the you're like the, I mean, what what percentage of the Titanic survived? Like of the ship, zero. <laughs> <laughs> the ship did not survive. <laughs> the silverware. Oh, the heart of the ocean. That jewel. locket, yeah. Um, that's a uh, that's just you know uh, an actual luck thing. You know, I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's this uh this gentleman in the, the real first... man makes his own luck. And that's from the movie, Titanic. <laughs> Should listen to your friend Billy Zane. Yeah, he's oh, a cool Billy. guy. Yeah, man, he could dance. That guy. He was um, a Phantom. He was in a comic book movie. Remember oh, that? Yeah. There was a British officer. Um, Phantom. He was the Phantom. Yeah. In uh, on fighting on the fields of the First World War in Flanders. Flanders. Nineteen eighteen. <laughs> that's the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he gets zapped by lightning. <gasps> in the man, imagine getting hit by lightning in a in war. In the battlefield. Jeez. I think I shouldn't be here. <laughs> they got some pretty cool new weapons. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys like on the cool chisel back there? <laughs> well, they did have hot air balloons. They must have thought it was. Correct. And he, um, he, he gets paralyzed from the waist down from getting zapped by this lightning. That's better than just the waist up. And um, he goes, yeah. he, he goes to Vancouver to pee his pants on, or what? and. And I know a guy that's got a glossy, <laughs> glossy ball, <laughs> ball bag. He's uh, he's speed bag. <laughs> speed bag, you ball bag. He's he's so he's you know in a wheelchair or whatever after the war, and he goes to Vancouver, and he's sitting under a tree, and the tree gets zapped by lightning, and uh, he. he oh, I I he, I know. he gets, oh, he, he yeah, gets yeah, paralyzed yeah. Uh, more down his right side that like. Oh, so he's got a fourth? He's three quarters. He's got, he's got a fourth left. Okay. And, I think um, that's a quadruple. He, he, gets, he, gets, he gets better. He gets better to the point where he can walk again. Hey. And then... Uh, but he gets struck again, put his legs back in? And then he's walking down the street and he gets bolted again. And now he's permanently paralyzed. What the fuck? Uh, you mean dead? No, no. I mean, he's permanently paralyzed for the rest of his life. He's di- he dies two years later. Um, of a lightning strike. And uh, then the lightning hits his tombstone, yeah. and destroys it. And four, yeah, I, that, I remember that. I remember the, the. Isn't that fucked up? What was his name? <laughs> his name was Major Sum- Four Summerford. Major Summerford. Yeah. Um, Holy shit. That's. But, <laughs> but now, a park ranger Roy Sullivan from Virginia, um, he was hit by lightning while hiding from a thunderstorm in a lookout tower. Good place. Um, Can't really hide in a lookout tower. Yeah, you? that blew his toenail off. That was gone. Forever? Yeah. Did he ever... Ew. Uh, Just constant bleeding. And uh, then he was... Uh, <laughs> he was driving in a truck. Lightning hits a tree. It deflects off the tree and goes straight into the truck and blasts him. Same guy. 
Same same guy, Park Ranger. No Roy, toenail. Roy Sullivan. No toenail. Did he lose his other toenail or what? Did this little piggy come home? <laughs> he's he's in his front yard. Gets struck again. Um, he's inside a ranger station. Gets struck the fourth time. He's oh in, in, inside the station. Um. <laughs> so now when he sees a storm coming, you know he just is like, "I'm out of here." Yeah. So he's driving away from a storm. Gets zapped in the truck. There's no driving five, away. five times. Go, five. You lay down on the lay down on the basement. There's no driving away. Uh, another time, there's a storm creeps up on him out of nowhere, and he starts just running. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but that's not the right move. Well, it doesn't matter if you're and, indoors. He was in a tower. He was in a range. He probably, he probably veers God. off to one direction because he lost his fucking yeah, toenail. Yeah, yeah. So but he the probably favors one side, you know. Tower, of course, but like you know, get inside a house and lay under a table. And I if mean, you're in a car and you get shocked, like the, theoretically, the car's two times it's supposed two to times shield now. you. Yeah, two times now. Um, so then uh, he's running away. He gets struck by the lightning. Did he drink a lot of blood? Was did he wear tinfoil hats? Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know what I'm. <laughs> I think his wife got hit one time. Oh, and she was like, "This, this is, is <laughs> it. This is it. Final well, straw." Well, I mean, they were in like a lightning heavy. Well, yeah, a like lightning a, heavy in, neighborhood. It was, yeah. <laughs> I believe the uh, channels. Were they in Asgard? A uh, <laughs> lightning heavy neighborhood. I don't know if uh, you there goes to. the neighborhood. So, this is a pretty nice house, but a lot of lightning here. The yeah. seventh time, seventh time, he's struck by lightning while fishing, and then and then he's hit by lightning, and he's got a fish, and then a bear comes out <laughs> of nowhere and tries to get the fish. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's like half superhero, right? Yeah. Of course. So, he, so he's able to fend this bear off. Yeah, with his electrical shock he powers. Swear, he's swinging at just a tree branch at him and he gets the fucking. Yeah, it's shooting sparks at <laughs> the bear. It's the bear out of there. <laughs> All right, well, they cooked the human. I better take the fish. Oh, God. Now, uh, the likelihood of what happened to him is one in septillion. Yeah, there's no no, but there but, but it, it it can't be. There must be the likelihood must be less because there's something about him, well, right? There must. Well, be. For, 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 for he kept jerking off when his mom uh, told him not that's to. That's right. He had what, these what, what is that? Iron palm. Has anybody had that? I mean, like. Well, I mean, enough people. I mean, how many people have ever lived? I mean, certainly not septillion. I mean, it's still an incredible yeah. fluke yeah but it's gonna happen to somebody getting it happen once is one in ten thousand yeah and then one in seven times one in septillion orders of magnitude on orders of magnitude on orders of magnitude yeah. For, i mean it's can you imagine just seeing the storm come and knowing that you're gonna get fucking blasted and then also by virtue of that, do you will it to happen? Yeah. I mean, basically, yeah. Were you asking for it? I mean, well, he's he, he's fishing. After the first one, he doesn't fish. But after six, he's You gotta like, give it up for him. He's just like, not fuck it. fucking... I mean... And it, just like, what'd he lose? A toenail? The other fucking idiot got paralyzed. Yeah. Idiot. I mean, at, at some point, you go, well, I'm gonna get struck by lightning anyway, so who the fuck... I saw one where this dude, um... He had white hair and then went bald mm -hmm. as, a, as a man. And then he got shocked by lightning, grew back full head of hair, black color. Jesus Christ! Wow. Shocked him right out of that. Yeah. I mean, you know. I mean could you imagine if he got shocked again and then lost it all? Yeah. After or, he's got a young trusty wife. One of my yeah, bosses always red. looked like he got fucking struck by lightning because he did. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the crazy one? <laughs> that they had the website? No, 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 oh. no. Because no. he did, he did what? He really, he just got he's got a oh, just, he just, just got a blast of of uh, he got through the phone, but it like oh it, yeah it sent him across the room like, yeah 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 picking up the phone in a thunderstorm yeah taking a shower and yeah, yeah. whatever that's one of those yeah. things oh you're God. told as a kid. I mean this guy though when he gets a bunch of these seven are actively running from the storm, I mean that's got to be so terrifying. And that, the, the, the station isn't safe. The car isn't safe. Not that we're nowhere, nowhere, nowhere safe. Nowhere safe. Your dad said it, dude. He's no, right, man. Nowhere, nowhere, safe. nowhere is safe. I mean, you got to start believing that you're cursed, right? Like, if you're this well, person. Gotta be, like, he's got to be studied by people. There's a, there's, it can't be a complete coincidence. Right. There, 
also like okay what's his job he's a ranger he's outside a lot he's in right yeah yeah that's for also, sure part certain of things it. increase your risk where's he standing in the fucking tower is he in the middle yeah. of it is he holding on to is he is, you know how holding many dead the kids are buried underneath your exactly. porch but yeah what graves did he rob yeah he must have done something <laughs> What graves did he rob? Yeah, yeah maybe he had God it coming. punishing him. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. How many kids did you touch, dude? <laughs> Too many? Not enough? Speed bag? Um, bag? You, um did, there, was this, there was this dude that was um, uh, Sutomo Yamaguchi, who was uh, uh, a Japanese fella. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, He's Japanese. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you get slapped by lightning or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Uh, he was sort of. <laughs> he was Katana. He was. Uh, he was in. He was, <laughs> he's on a mission uh, to sell some cars uh, away from home, and um, <laughs> mission to sell some. Cars. Yeah, and um, what was his name? Uh, Sutomo Yamaguchi, selling Suzuki's, and uh, he was. I love that Beastie Boys song. He was uh, in uh, Hiroshima. So Tom Yamaguchi and, was uh, Susan. and and they dropped they dropped uh, little boy on the the city of Hiroshima. Uh-huh. Oh, and, uh huh. No. And so everywhere, everywhere he goes. So then he goes home to Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here comes the fat man, <laughs> and he's telling his boss, he's like, "So you can't sell cars That's... there. The whole fucking city's on fire." Hey, you wouldn't fucking believe it. There's not even yeah, a fucking come car. Come over here to Nagasaki. Yeah. There's no no yeah, not not a even... fucking nuke in sight. Nah, yeah. <laughs> And they hear, they hear the big. bomb drop together, and the bus goes, "What the fuck was that?" And he goes, ah, "I know what it is." Shit. Man, not again, yo. And uh, he he um, <laughs> he was going home to get, you know to also get help because he was in the outer blast area. So and and then once the second bomb hits, they're like, "We don't give a fuck about you at all. We got other problems, you know, like all these other people." Mm-hmm. And first timers. Uh, so his yeah. so his wounds all get infected for like a week. Oh my god! And, and he, they're just burns. He's basically. he's the only recognized survivor of both bombings, and he he lived to the age of ninety three. That and that's the from the documentary Wolverine Origins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the guy that went on to become Silver Samurai and hunted down Wolverine for his healing capacity. Uh, I see. Very good documentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, Are there any unrecognized survivors? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was probably unrecognizable after the first couple blasts. <laughs> yeah. Looking like yeah, look Freddy like, Krueger. Like, yeah. I, I have a great story. <laughs> well, he, show, he shows up he in the, he shows up in Nagasaki. And he, they're like, why are you wearing all black? What's with the glasses? Imagine going <laughs> home to Nagasaki. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. What do you mean? It was a nice place. It yeah, was. No, of course. It was yeah. a nice place. Uh, oh. Talk of the bell of the ball. Talk of the town. <laughs> But yeah, those are, I mean, those are the ones I really wanted to tell you about. Where I just couldn't stop laughing reading them because uh, I'm sick. Better luck tomorrow. You know? <laughs> it's, it's just so funny. The idea of, I mean, just oh my god, you poor bastard. You, you poor bastard. Poor, poor bastard. Like I, it is the thing. You go, like, is it me? What, what, bring, what have? Well, I if I'm done? the other guy, if I'm I'm the second lightning strike fella, mm-hmm. I start to think that I'm fucking immortal. I'm a Highlander. Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Him, him, him fishing. He's like, well, I'm gonna get struck by lightning in the middle of a pond. Yeah, I will, but I'm not gonna fucking die. Yeah, so I'm gonna, fucking... I'm gonna catch more fish. Yeah. I'm gonna go chop I'll off kill fucking the, the, the Gergen's head or whatever, <laughs> the Kurgan, and there's gonna be only one. It's simple. <laughs> bear, this bear. What's that fish? Mm. <laughs> well, he smelled the cooked meat. Smelled fish, fish fry. Yeah. God. By the way, Crawford's. In Los Angeles, doing takeaway orders. Ooh. Fried chicken and cold beer to go. No kidding. Fried chicken, ice cold beer. Some tiny Miller Lights. Miller High Lifes. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. They'll give you buds. Ice cold buds. Ice cold. Are they tiny? Well, well they're, the they're maybe not the full 12. <laughs> no, they give you cans. They're going to give you cans to go. Cans to go. That's right. I love cans. I love cans. Oh, God. To go? The episode is brought to you by Crawford's. Mm-hmm. Fried chicken, ice cold beer. Mm-hmm. Now offering to go service. I'm into that. Right, right, and right tell right. them we sent you. Sure, tell them sure, the sure. P Boys sent you. <laughs> They'll have no idea who you're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, the P Boys but and our P Bodies. If enough people say it, they'll think it's a movement. That's right. Just chill, it's just the P P Boys. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great, fellas. Yeah, that was great. Guys, uh, Aaron, that was great. It's good to be yeah. here. Yeah. In the same room. Yeah. Dylan Beck, Dylan Beck picked up on the magic. You see that? Yeah, I didn't. He was like, he could, he could feel he the, could feel the, the vibrations, the, the good, miasma, the good, the good vibrations in the room. Piasma. Um, 
Yeah. Come on, come on. Feel it, feel it. <laughs> oh, also, uh, we had, um, I just want to say real quick, uh, the, uh, the theory we got sent on, uh, uh, Oh, Secret Baby? Yeah, Secret Baby on Matt's episode mm -hmm. of... Amy um, Semple McPherson. Yes. She yeah. disappeared for a few months conveniently. Oh, she, I didn't she see She kind this. of thought that the, the recovery period indicated maybe an abortion. Yes. Or or a secret uh, secret child. There is, uh, yes, I remember there was some rumors about that. Yes. But uh, she's like, yeah, um, she was like, that was, you know, she's like, I was listening to the episode and yelling in my car, Secret Baby, Secret Baby. Ah, uh, where, where, where was this? Is this on the Patreon? This is, uh, no, this Instagram. is on Instagram right oh, shortly before oh, okay. we recorded this right. episode. Oh, I, did, I didn't see that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there were definitely rumors about that e even then. Right. Yes. Uh, let's that give, was the thing to do. It's a uh, heart name. Kerwin, I believe is who That was, was uh, BFAB11. Thanks, BFAB. On Instagram. Uh, Good call. Yeah, absolutely. BFAB. There were, yeah, there were Brittany definitely rumors. Kerwin. Brittany Kerwin, yes. Uh, thank you for getting thank in touch, you Brittany. So much. Uh, I'm just looking at pictures of you and your children now, <laughs> and that's great. Thank you for being a friend. Yeah, um, that was that was cool. Uh, it was. You're our secret baby. <laughs> yeah, I just had to. I had to. Um, thank you, Brittany. I had to throw that out there because uh, it was something I, I don't think I had ever. I didn't put it together. No, I mean yeah. there was a lot going on in that. Um, I, I think that that moment in time was something that was. Mm -hmm. There is th th there is one last thing I just want to tell you about um, with, and I don't know if you ever heard about this, um, but uh, you're familiar with the son of of uh, Honest Abe, Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. All of his kids died. The Robert Todd. Yeah. Um, Poor bastard. Then he even died. It's crazy. Uh, Man, he what died. Yeah, yeah. He was twenty. Man, people he was died. Twenty one when his dad was assassinated, and um, he was Secretary of War under Garfield. And Wait, really? I didn't know that. Four, four months into it, um, they they went to New Jersey, and um, Garfield was gunned down. And triggered. triggered. Yeah. <laughs> no, I meant Lincoln was triggered. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Robert yeah. Todd Lincoln was triggered. And then by he the became fact that these the, two men the vampire were... hunter. And then um, he uh, he was invited to Buffalo. By the recently reelected William McKinley, uh, oh, where then yeah, McKinley was that. there, and he was not there, but he heard the gunshots, mm -hmm. and then afterward he refused every presidential invite that he got for yeah. the rest of his life. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Isn't that fucking amazing? It's a tumultuous time. Well, you know, he's but a man. It, there's four assassinations in U.S. history, and he's around for three. Oh, he was a man who was struck. But, by well, lightning. that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. He. It was a. I mean. It was a tumultuous time, but also, yes, he was I, there for three. I mean, Gar Gar think... Garfield and McKinley, I think, are like 20-something years apart. Yeah. But, like, and Je you're... Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, my God. Also an assassination. <laughs> totally been motivated. I mean... Yeah. More of a kink Oof. thing. <laughs> More of a kink party that got way out of hand. <laughs> my yeah. safe word is, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. How many times do I have to fucking repeat it? Yeah. I heard shoe. Let's leave him up there. <laughs> shoe. Yeah, he said there's a certain fatality about presidential functions when I'm there. Mm. Also, I mean, the travel, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, uh. fucking... Hey boys, you wanna you wanna call it? Call that was it pretty nice, that was fellas. Pretty fun, yeah. I like that stuff. I, I really do. I a little really potpourri, a freaky, weird, yeah. all yeah. Uh, events, yeah. uh, happenstance, a uh, good, yeah. coincidence, quinky dinks, mm -hmm. bone wars, Kinky. <laughs> kinks. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna say good night. I love you. My name is John Fahey. Good night. My name is Aaron Pita. Matt Perso. Good night, everybody. We love you. Yeah.